Hello friends, welcome to this video session on Bama's Karukku, a critical analysis. This uh, video is prepared as part of the discussion of the paper Compulsory Foundation Course in English for semester English language course at BCA uh, for BCA and BSc at Mangalore University. This is the 31 session uh, on the novel Karukku written by Bama. Welcome to this video. Here I attempt a discussion, uh, 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 an analysis of the text as a uh, overall. So when we come to the overall uh, uh, text, Karaku, uh, the first thing that we uh, can conclude about the text is that it's an expression of the text Karaku. Karaku is an expression for the sufferings of Dalits. Throughout the uh, novel, Bama takes up so many instances uh, where how Dalits in India suffer in various ways. Karukku therefore is an embodiment of author's personal life and as a personal, uh, you know, as a person uh, born in uh, Dalit community, Bama underwent lot of struggles, lot of oppressions and uh, she found Karukku as a platform to document all that. So therefore it's a voice of uh, all the underprivileged Dalits in India. Karaku is a text which voices them. Therefore, it's a hallmark text in uh, Dalit literature in India. It's a powerful portrayal of Dalit suppression and the process of their marginalization. We see at different parts of the novel how Dalits are made to suffer, how they are you know, suppressed and oppressed in the hands of the power uh, operated by the uh, rich landlords like the Niker community landowners. So thus the marginalization of the Dalits in India is traced very powerfully in the text. Dalit movements in India have been mediated mainly through men which tended to sideline the issues concerning Dalit women but this text provides a platform for a uh, woman, Dalit woman, Bama to uh, take active part at least through literature in that Dalit movement. So earlier all those moments, Dalit moments were compelled to face the misery doubled up due to caste and gender discrimination. But you find here that as a Dalit Christian woman, Bama found in Karaku a suitable space to articulate the sufferings of the Dalit women as well. Because earlier, whatever moments had happened uh, in, in, in field of, uh, you know, in, in the area of Dalit, uh, <coughs> Dalits fighting for, sorry, Dalits fighting for uh, rights, there women issues or there was a, a gender discrimination or women issues were ignored. But this text, through this text, Bama attempts uh, even to discuss the experience of Dalit women and represent their voice through Karaku. So as a Dalit Christian woman, Bama found uh, Karaku as a, a suitable space to articulate the sufferings of Dalit women. Therefore, then, and we also see Bama's Karaku is the uh, author's life experience as a female, a Dalit and a Christian. There are three layer experience in the text. She is a female and the way she experienced as a female and as a Dalit and also as a Dalit Christian, right? The ex her experience as a Dalit Christian, the threefold experience contribute to the uh, you know uh, um, uh, uh, narration throughout the novel. Therefore, it shows how the author is marginalized not just once but thrice on caste, on gender, and religion. Three-way marginalization of Bama is uh, powerfully portrayed in the text. And uh, we, when we come to uh, uh, this as an autobiography, emulating the conventions of, of autobiography it doesn't stick to the conventions of autobiography, but it emulates or it crosses the boundary of autobiography where Bama gives a realistic picture of caste and gender discrimination. She doesn't just uh, narrate the story of her life, but also makes wherever possible, she makes a critique of 
the caste and gender discrimination exist in our society she present different instances of suppressing of dalit and particularly a dalit woman uh, how a dalit woman experience different layered you know relegation or suppression in society through several instances of realistic portrayal uh, of her own experience right so that's why it's an embodiment of that uh, uh, voice of the dalits and uh, her childhood observations of vagaries made at naikar's houses her uh, ab- observations at the bazaars owned by the nadars during the intercaste disputes what observations she made during the intercaste disputes maybe the dispute between the chaliyars and the pariyars or at the church practices wherever uh, she uh, went even at the convent provide the food for her thought to expose that uh, presence of such a caste based and uh, gender based and uh, uh, class based discrimination in society the word karuku in the title of the novel means pamira leaf so pamira is a tree that pamira leaf has got two sharp you know that has sharp edges on both sides so it it's it's saw edged in shape like a saw like a like a sword right it's saw edged two sided uh, you know saw so you see saw uh, saw is used to cut the uh, garagasa saw is used to cut the trees so it's a saw edged right you can see a kind of edge bama finds many similarities between her strife life and karaku just like the saw edged uh, you know um, uh, pamira leaf her life is also uh, you know has got uh, Uh, some struggles that that's why she finds uh, that as a suitable title so we can see therefore how is it uh, saw edge that means a different layer of uh, you know sufferings that she had to face in her life in short karuku narrates what it is to be right what it is to be a dalit and a woman right you can see two elements what it is to be a dalit and what it is to be a woman right bama shows how a dalit is at the worst end of Uh, end of receiving oppression among the you know dalits similar context is there in the western scenario where black women have uh, you know have been facing that kind of oppression they receive oppression from the you know male society their uh, patriarchal setup on the other hand we also see they are the uh, you know they are at the end of the discrimination from the uh, you know class based rather i can also say it is a color based or racial discrimination right equis you observe bama here documents that kind of discrimination you know oppression uh, of all dalit women uh, taking place in india so therefore she tries to voice the um, uh, those people and uh, tries to bring some social change through the activity of writing this text so she is thus doubly oppressed by caste and gender Uh, she in her case uh, her position is further endangered by the existence of her as a dalit christian that means thrice oppressed by caste from other caste people by gender by upper caste people by caste she is uh, subjected to oppression and then by gender her own community male members there are many right not just she is uh, speaking about her own suppression Uh, many dalit women who suffer in the hands of the male members of their own community on the other hand we also see as a dalit christian wherever she went to the christian religious setup there she was uh, at, at the uh, um, you know subjugating or relegating end she was at the suffering side right? that's why it's a thrice uh, uh, you know um, three level or thrice uh, suppressed or three level of suppression in her life hence karaku focuses on three different forces that cut across and sear bama's life na- 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 namely uh, caste gender and religion it uh, it shows three different forces that cut across and sear bama's life right they are caste gender and religion remember these are the three things where bama uh, faces the trouble or oppression in life and the, she uh, therefore accounts them in her novel throughout the novel even uh, the uh, uh, references i mentioned for my videos where there are interviews interesting interviews i have provided you the links there you can see in those interviews also bama herself discloses these things the way she is thrice uh, suffered thrice uh, uh, you know 
uh, oppressed. Bama therefore describes her predicament through different instances, providing different examples. We can see some instances like the, her experience of traveling from her college days while returning home and during holidays and the way Niker women sitting next to her on the bus would immediately ask her that she was going to what street. That was to know her, you know, caste background and if she belonged to uh, Paraya's free, you know, uh, Paraya community and that Naikar woman would get up, either she would get up or direct Bama to, uh, you know, get up from that place, leave that place. This is the uh, one instance or similarly, we have so many instances where caste discrimination, untouchability, the practice of untouchability is uh, referred in the text. As soon as uh, she said that the chair, you know, the, the seri, uh, she did get up and move off to another seat or tell her to move elsewhere. They believed that sitting next to a Dalit would pollute them. So here you find that uh, uh, the <coughs> practice of untouchability among the upper class people. Maybe uh, she is taking individual instance of that woman who sat next to her in the bus, but she is trying to by choosing this macro, you know, micro level of uh, example, trying to prove at macro level how untouchable, untouchability exists even after independence or even after 70 years of independence and adoption of constitution which banned untouchability in article 17 of uh, the constitution. So then she shows the upper caste uh, um, practices of untouchability through these instances and questions it. She considers Dalits as inferior to them and humiliate them based on caste. Read how they humiliate, uh, yeah, the way upper caste people consider Dalits as inferior and what is the base for that. That is what she is trying to question and she also highlights why and how they humiliate them based on the uh, humiliate the Dalits based on caste. That's why every incident that she quotes or takes up for discussion in the novel provides some kind of food for her rational discussion of the existing system. She also says at school, right, she even at the school, even at school, the class teacher or PT teacher would ask all the Harinjan children to stand up at assembly or during lessons. There also that attitude towards the caste, you know, uh, you know, negligent attitude towards their caste was continuing, it continued, right? Therefore, she uh, felt humiliated by all these instances and she mentions uh, various examples of uh, humiliation she underwent uh, being born in uh, so-called low caste, right? So, the upper caste people treated them in such a way that uh, they are inferior in birth. That is what she is trying to question throughout the novel. Bama herself confesses that there were many important things that uh, she chose not to recall in Karaku. See, this is another in thing. She has many such instances some instances cannot be even recalled in Karaku. That kind of humiliating experiences are there with Bama. That's why it's a work which is the expression of her personal life. What she experienced in life ke, you know, comes into, um, you know, into words through this novel. She witnessed many violent incidents related to caste conflict. However, she left them out in Karaku because she felt that it would deviate from the book's central issues. So, what are the central issues? You see, the way she takes up the discussion of, you know, um, caste-based discriminations meted out to the Dalits and how Dalits are made to remain in poor status throughout life by this society, that is the central issue and probably individual uh, examples are left out uh, which are not connected to that in directly, in a direct manner. So, the story narrated in Karaku is not Bama's story alone, therefore, it is the story of that vast section of oppressed Dalits in India. But the depiction of her community's collective experience, right, it's a collective experience, right, it's a, it's a collective experience of Dalits suppression in whole, in the whole country, according to Bama. So, she questions the dominance of uh, Therefore, the novel is a document of the portrayal of Dalit suppression also. She questions that uh, dominance of some uh, over others in our society, right? She counters that hegemony of, uh, hegemony means dominance of few over many, right? So, hegemony of the upper caste over the low caste people and claim uh, uh, and the claim of Dalit men's superiority 
over their female at two level there is the presence of hegemony and she questions that what are the two levels on the one hand we find the upper caste have maintained their hegemony over the low caste by establishing their dominance over the low caste on the other hand we have men uh, uh, established their dominance over women in dalit community and that's the second level of uh, you know uh, establishing hegemony the conspiracy of the upper caste is also exposed to establish caste hegemony and thereby to make unjust suppression of the of dalits in the text so she represent the dalits as hard working people and ready to work in odd circumstances with their dedication to their service so by these uh, representation you know by this representation she proves or she tries to build a dalit identity which is distorted in india which is mistaken in a different way that is what the mama uh, probably primarily you know feels or um, has the primary intention of proving that here right dalits as people born she considers dalits as people born with unique skills including artistic talent that's why we have that example of pavlu or udan and all you know even common so they all had some kind of artistic skills right she tries to give all those things in the text and prove the uh, exclusive skills that it's have, have in india so exposes also the dominance of land owning class over such a community using the agencies such as education police force uh, ex- religion etc so in the in the althusser uh, althusser's term it is hegemony and uh, using agencies right agencies are uh, the mediums where hegemony or dominance is established in society that can be seen in uh, this uh, novel where uh, for example upper class use education uh, we have the example of the chaliyas using the people who have money right chaliyas using police force to establish their dominance different thing even Uh, at church they use religion right there are different things though various instances she questions i'm sorry through various instances she questions that bonded labor system and of the oppression of dalits see burning issues of the country right some burning uh, you know v- debating problems of the country are taken for discussion you see bonded labor system was there till uh, 90s even today there are traces here and there but we see that was a you know sick system in society that cynic system in society is questioned the oppression of dalits is questioned in the text therefore as a dalit woman bama also highlights another side of hegemony through the prevalence of patriarchy in the society bama doesn't just stick to the hegemony of uh, or the dominance of the upper class over the uh, lower castes uh, but also she takes up the discussion of uh, how men in her own community dominated over women though women are the important counterparts of their family right the, the way women contributed to economic social and uh, all other overall uh, you know improvement of family status so she describes a dalit woman the dalit woman as courageous women who can toil ceaselessly at home and outside the double role performed by women dalit women right that is what she is trying to portray in the novel and support that women's existence in the village and all the country throughout the country and she shows that they can manage the household single handedly with their men folk collectively without their men uh, men folk collect so especially the men of her community are rounded up by the police over a dispute you know, that's an example you can see when the dispute happened between the chaliyas and the pariyas police almost all the men of their community were rounded up they were arrested and at that time it is the women who handled the family of wives and they worked for the progression right so likewise you see women voice or the voicing of the women is there in the text using various anecdotes she opposes the act of forcing dalit women to put with the enormous violence at male hands despite the dual pressure of work at home and in the field uh, field or workplace so you see the way uh, dalit women become a uh, subjection of uh, you know are the end of you know uh, dalit women are subjected to enormous violence widespread violence 
it's in the hands of the men sometimes they came uh, drinking and they beat them like anything like animals we have that example of udan for example the blower right the way he uh, used to beat his wife even in the public place for uh, the reason why uh, her wife's parents compelled him to marry her right that's the reason so then bama makes a significant attempt in this work to expose the oppression of dalit christians at the church that's another thing right how dalit christians are oppressed or suffered at the church she present that dalits like her uh, uh, like her uh, like her uh, many uh, like bama seek the church and their service to solve their problem as a kind of palliative for discriminations but unfortunately they again subjected to the discrimination a different kind of discrimination in the church however it remains a mirage therefore with the institution institution institutionalized religion discriminates against dalits in direct contravention of its teachings and precepts thus through the example of different incidents happened in the church she proves that there also the dalits in india uh, become a point of uh, oppression so she highlights that christianity does not recognize the caste divisions with her experience at the church which proved itself a casteist in its dealings it did not uh, support the poor it did not support the needy and the uh, underprivileged but they were to safeguard the interests of the uh, wealthy and people belonging to their own caste therefore we observe here that it's a it is casteist in its very dealings and then karaku also depicts how dalit christians are not allowed to uh, you know sing in the church choir right that's one more example they were not allowed to sing in the church choir they were asked to beat the drums and all that they are forced to sit separately away from the upper caste christians i think we have one incident in the novel where uh, when the pusai was going on when they were singing there were many to drum but not to sing because they were not allowed to sing also that is what she is questioning again and they are forced to sit separately away from the upper caste christians what is so disgusting is that they had a different symmetry right they were not even allowed to bury in the common symmetry there for all christians but dalits were uh, given a separate symmetry within the village that was behind the church and she writes that they are made to use a different graveyard beyond the beyond the outskirts the people who are not dalits they had different uh, you know symmetry this kind of discrimination uh, is existed in uh, even in the church setup where they embraced that with a hope of finding some solution to the existing prom- problems she demonstrates how a dalit is not allowed to grow and occupy a prominent position within the order of the church right so we have such examples throughout the um, you know text for maybe when bama occupies the uh, position of a head master she was again placed to some other place uh, and climbing some irrational or illogical reasons right that's why bama gives instances though she performed well so though she excelled uh, in the religious practices at the convent bama was not equally given uh, positions right? that's why she questions all that uh, discriminations at church also bama presents um, her life experience and her community the pariahs experience to show how the church ill disillusions them it create makes them feel disappointment right thus the discrimination the discriminations existed in the church is also exposed through the text she writes that they sought christianity to escape from casteist oppression at the hands of the orthodox hindus however the religious practice at the church and widespread presence of sham greatly disillusion them as they cannot escape oppression within the church fold that's how bama gives a voice to the dalit christians not just dalit christians but also even dalit christian women right so and uh, she tries to give a uh, highlight the problem existed she also points out that the church distorted the actual image and teachings of jesus christ this is another uh, thing that where she is uh, unhappy that is the real teachings of god or the bible or jesus christ had right messages to the people but for bama she has observed that 
those teachings never reached society because they were distorted to safeguard the interests of the people who are mediated it that is the question she tries to put forth she condemns the preachings of meekness to faithful people right subjugation you know sub you know being subjected to them right meekness to the faithful people while suppressing the radical liberal teachings of jesus see they want the people to be faithful and do different things in the name of that but the god never wanted them to be subjugated or subjected to them or subjected to the authority like that god wanted them liberal and stand that is what the argument bama places here bama requests dalits to educate themselves she takes a turn on the tone here by calling or giving an urge for dalits to educate themselves recognize jesus as a defender of the oppressed instead of you know falling in falling prey uh, into the wickedness of this system thus the novel is a powerful uh, um, document of uh, by a dalit woman therefore it's a dalit women's uh, autobiography tamil dalit women's autobiography and which documents the experience of a dalit christian woman and a powerful portrayal of dalit suppression in society also and a question on that is posed through the novel it discusses the oppression oppression of uh, uh, dalits and the way oppression is meted out to them through the dominance of the upper caste and she highlights in number of examples how dalit women are oppressed further by dalit men at home the two way oppression or in her case it is a three way oppression is exposed through the text the book therefore serves as a kind of solace for better experience of dalits by voicing out the marginalized dalits in india she provides a kind of convenient form yeah this text provides a convenient form for bama to question the various level of oppressions meted out to dalits in our society and give you know voice to the feelings of dalits and also a kind of identity to dalits is constructed through different instances in the text so with this uh, we will conclude the discussion made on all the chapters and uh, critical analysis analysis of the text as well uh, i am thankful to you all for watching all these videos uh, and uh, f- there are two videos that follow this they discuss the possible questions on the uh, text karaku if uh, it's prescribed yeah it's prescribed for mangalore university uh, english language course and you see possible questions the they are prepared by um, our uh, teacher association um, mangalore university english teachers association those questions are taken for discussion in the next video thank you for watching see you in the next video